and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am Krista Burns uh, at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. We hold it every Wednesday morning at live at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, it's one hour sessions usually and we have all sorts of different topics, anything that we think may be of interest to librarians in the state. Um, presentations, interviews, book reviews, tours, um, outside speakers we have come in sometimes, a whole mishmash of things, anything that you think may be of interest to you. Uh, this week we have uh, Lana Novotny from our Technology and Access Services Department. We'll be talking about updates and changes to the Wilson databases. Some of you may have attended um, road shows, database road shows in the last month or two. Um, some of you may not have been able to. That's fine. You can get a little um, taste of what she was doing in those um, in this session. So I am going to pass it over to Elena. Just slide on the <laughs> Well, good morning, everybody. Just a second here while I get everything switched around. Testing on switch two. Yeah. Well, as Chris, Krista mentioned, um, this morning I want to talk about the Wilson databases. And there's been a few changes, um, upgrades made that I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware about. Uh, so I'm right now, I'm on the Nebraska Access website. I'm going to go ahead and go to the databases available to Nebraskans and click on that link. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the Wilson Omni file and just go ahead and dive right into the database. Um, if you're not familiar about with the Wilson Omni file, um, this database is 100% full text. It contains about 2,490 plus journals and coverage starts about 1994. Um, that doesn't mean every journal goes back to 1994, but you won't find anything older than 1994 in the, journal, or in the database. Um, the subject matters in the Wilson Omni file are quite um, varied. You'll have things like your Time, your Newsweek, and then you also have a lot of more scholarly journals, those kind of journal of type um, publications. So as I said, it's quite a variety of information. Uh, I want to start off by pointing out some changes they've made to the Wilson interface. Let me, I'm going to play with the spotlighter here and see if that will help me um, point out some of the different things. Uh, first thing you may have noticed on the blue bar across the top, you will see the search um, button now here. Uh, in previously to about a couple months ago, you used to have an option to search and advanced search. Uh, they have changed that now, so only the search button appears, which I think is great. I think it's a little easier to explain to people, just click on search. And then they have moved the basic and advanced search options um, down below, and you'll find them now right above the search box. So it's really easy to switch between the basic and the advanced search. Um, you may also have noticed that they're kind of promoting the My Wilson Web a little bit more. You'll see that on the top up here where it says sign into My Wilson Web. And then again on the blue toolbar where it says My Wilson Web. And I'll get into those a little bit later on and show you how My Wilson Web works. Uh, another feature that is new is the text size. Up over here on the right hand side you can see the three different um, sizes of A's. And then below that is the interface language. Let me jump back to my normal pointer here. So you'll notice now I can click on the different sizes of A's and it will up the font. I have to say this is probably one of the coolest features that I really like this time. Um, I probably spend too much time in front of the computer reading all day, so I really like to bump my <laughs> font up to make it a little, a little bit larger. I think it's easier to read. And then below that, as I mentioned, you do have the interface language option. Um, so you can change the interface to, you can see here your choices are English, German, French, Italian, Spanish, and um, Portuguese. And by the interface language, I do mean those words like here where it says advanced search or browse or thesaurus. That's what we mean by the interface. So um, that is an option. And please, if you have any questions, don't feel... Um, don't worry about interrupting me. Go ahead and just type them into the chat box. I'll be glad to uh, stop in and explain anything. 
I just kind of briefly want to go over the search screen again in case you're not familiar with it. Um, you'll notice at the top we do have this, the search boxes here where you can type in your search. Um, by default, the All Smart Search is selected. Uh, if you don't want to do a smart search, you do have other options. You can do keywords, titles. Um, another one that a lot of people may find useful is the journal name. So if someone does bring in a citation with a particular journal name, you can limit your search to a particular journal. Um, working my way down the screen, you can see we have an option to limit to dates. Um, below that, we can limit to a particular document type or a physical description. Then over on the right, a couple other limiter options. Um, the one I want to make sure I pointed out here is the expand option. That says also search within the full text of articles for extra results. Um, by default, Wilson does not search the full text of all the articles. Um, but this feature can be really useful if you are doing a search um, on a particular topic that you're just not really getting very many results. Um, it's great to try expanding your search to search the full text. A lot of times you can find some hits that way. Oh, just a second. I have a chat question coming. I'll have to open that up quick. Um, the question is, when, do you, when we do a search, what are some key points in a using the advanced search? Um, personally, I like the advanced search just because it gives me a little bit more control of what I'm searching. Um, for example, it's nice to be able to limit it to the different uh, dates. Also, I like the fact that I have multiple search boxes. I can easily enter in multiple terms and combine them. But then also, I really like, I think the search, the subject area can be useful. And that was the last thing I wanted to show you on the screen here. So let me, it's over here, here at the bottom. Um, I'll come back to the chat question in just a second. I want to point out the subject area search over here on the right-hand side. What this will do is limit your search to a particular subject area. Um, in the subjects here, you can see we have things like art, business, there's education. Um, education could be useful if you have um, teachers working on maybe you know, an advanced degree, and so they're researching a particular topic and they want to limit it to the area of education. Um, library and information science, of course, is available if any of you are working on your degrees. But the one I really want to make sure um, folks realize over here is the Reader's Guide Current Events. Um, this is going to limit your search to your current event magazines. Uh, this works great if you are working with students and the results that you are getting are kind of a little bit too high level for them. You're getting a lot of those kind of journal of type um, publications that are just a little, like I said, over their head. Um, limiting it to the Reader's Guide Current Events will bring back more of your times, your news weeks, and those type of magazines that they'll probably have a little bit um, easier time understanding. I'm going to go jump back to the chat now and there's another question out here. Um, the question was, please remind me what smart search actually is looking at when it's searching. Uh, I don't have the full description in front of me right now. I should have brought it with. I didn't think about it. But it does actually search for things like your titles, and the descriptions, the, um, the subject that have been assigned to it. And then it also um, assigns relevancy ranking to it. And so when we look at the search results, you'll see a little percentage in front of each of your results. And that percentage um, tells you is, is how it's ranked within the All Smart Search. Of course, the higher the ranking, the more relevant the system thinks your search results are. And I also want to point out um, in each of those groupings, for example, if you have a number of search results that have been assigned to 90%, the system automatically sort, um, sorts those by date. So you'll have the newest one on the top of your results. And so again, if you have some group that are 80%, again, it's going to sort it with the newest of the 80% on top. Mm -hmm. 
before I go on, does that answer everybody's questions or do you have more questions for me? All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead now and um, perform a, a search. Um, I'm going to have to clear my search screen here, make sure everything's back where it is. I'm just going to do a really uh, simple search here for Roger Welsh. And there's a few things now I want to point out on the search results screen. Let me grab back my, my spotlighter here. Um, let's see. I just want to point out over here on my search results real quickly, you can see these 80% and these 70%. Those are the percentages that I was talking about um, for the All Smart search. A few other items that are new on the screen I want to make sure I point out is over here on the right, you can now jump from res your results page either by number or if you have a particular page number you want to jump to, um, that can be useful. I was just helping someone on the phone the other, actually yesterday, and it was really nice to have that option because we were looking at different results screens and it was nice to be able to tell the person, you know, I'm on page 10 of the results and you can easily just pop that number in there and go right to that page. So um, you may not use it a lot, but when you, when you need it, it definitely will come in handy. Let's see, a few other things on this screen I want to make sure I point out is this link over here to RSS feed. How many of you, um, do any of you use RSS? <clears throat> Got one yes. Well, to probably really oversimplify RSS, um, it's just a way of bringing information from multiple locations to one place. Um, so that way you don't have to go out and look at multiple websites to see the information. The information is gathered for you into one place. Um, I, I'm not going to go into too much detail about RSS, but if you guys have questions about RSS later, um, give me a call. I'd be glad to help explain it to you. I just wanted to point out the fact that in Wilson you now have the options to create RSS feeds for your searches. So if I wanted to, I could click on this RSS feed option. And it's going to pop up a little window here. And what it's going to do now is create an RSS feed for me. I can tell it how often do I want the feed, um, how long do I want the feed to continue. I'll just leave it at one month. And I can create my alert. It usually takes a couple seconds here. Um, you'll note, oh, here's it already back, so. I just went ahead and clicked on the feed URL, so. Um, if you're actually uh, using an RSS reader, you could grab this URL and just you know, plop it into your reader and you'd be good to go. So then anytime the system would automatically run the search for you, and every time there's new results, it would just be sent to your RSS reader. Um, this is a really great option if you have students who are actually working on their paper ahead of time. Okay, I know that's probably pretty slim that that would actually <laughs> happen, but, you know, it is an option. Um, the other option, it could be useful if you have someone in your community that maybe has a particular health issue. Mm -hmm. They want to stay on top of that health issue. And so then they can... Um, Set up an RSS. Okay. Oh, just a second here. Let me. All right. Everybody said they couldn't see the RSS, so let me back up and show it to you again. I just went ahead and clicked on the RSS feed link. Now, do you guys see the second Wilson page? Okay. 
Um, all you have to do here, as I, I said before, is select a frequency. How often do you want the feed to be checked? So monthly, weekly, or daily? And then you have a, a set the duration. So, you know, maybe if you know your paper is going to be over in three months, you could just set it to a, a three-month dur duration. Or if it's another topic, maybe you want it a year. Um, you can go ahead and create alert. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on the URL for the alert and bring up the next window here that actually will show you what the feed looks like. So if you're using an RSS reader, all you'd have to do is grab the URL at the top of the screen and just copy it and paste it into your reader, and then you would have the feed available to you in your RSS reader. Yeah, I think there's, um, someone mentioned that this could be helpful with, for students with learning needs. Yes, I think there's tons of applications for the um, RSS feed. Uh, another option I just wanted to point out to you as I'm closing the windows here is that I could have also done a search on a particular journal name. For example, Sports Illustrated is included in the database. I could have just done a search on Sports Illustrated and set up an RSS feed. So every time new articles um, from for Sports Illustrated are added to the database, they would be sent to my RSS feed. Um, I I think that covers what I wanted to talk about with RSS feeds. Does anybody have any questions about them? As I said, if, you, if you're not familiar with what RSS is, just give me a call and I'd be glad to explain it. That could probably take another hour, so I don't want to get into too much detail right now. All right. Well, I'm just going to go on then and talk about some more items here. Um, you'll see here's my first result I want to point out. It's uh, How I Lost My Tombstone from the Nebraska Life Magazine. And you'll see under it I have a few options. I have my full text HTML. There's the full text PDF. Um, so that clicking on either of those would bring up the full text. I have the option to save it to my Wilson Web, which I'll come back and talk in about a few minutes. And then you'll see this new little icon here that looks like a speaker. Uh, that's mm -hmm. what I want to talk about next. But I'm not actually going to click on that. I'm just going to go ahead and click on the title right now and bring up the article. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so you can see now, here I have the full text of the article. And what I want to show you is this option available now to hear the audio. So what this um, actually is going to do, it's a mechanical voice that will read the full text of this article to you. And I have to admit, we haven't tried this yet. We're just kind of going in and just trying it. Hopefully it'll work today. So um, after I get started, if one of, someone could let, let me know that it works, um, that would be really great. Yeah. Author, Roger Welsh. Title, How I Lost My Own Tombstone. Source, okay. Nebraska Life 130342I June 2009. Copyright, the magazine publisher is the copyright holder of this article and it is reproduced with permission. Further reproduction of this article in violation of the copyright is prohibited. To contact the publisher, http colon slash slash www.nebraskalife.com slash. In my long life I've lost one of just about everything. Lovely Linda notes on her yearly calendar the one day 16 years ago when I actually found my own billfold. I once lost a pecan pie, an unforgivable lapse as far as I'm concerned. I found it months later in the pie saver on top of the refrigerator. Who would have thought to look in a pie saver for a pie? Well, I think I just said a personal best. I lost my tombstone. It's a long story. I'll try to make it short. Well, that was the male voice, and I'll come to the questions just a second here. I just wanted to give you a, so you could hear the female Author, voice, too. Roger Welch. Title, How I Lost My Own Tombstone. Source, Nebraska Life 13, Note 342, my June 2000. 
This has get size of clarity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, a couple other things before I go back to answer the questions. I know there's a couple of them hanging out there. Um, I just also wanted to mention about the audio. Um, it is available for all the different articles, and you'll notice here that there's an option to download the audio. That means you can actually download an MP3, and if you have a little MP3 player, you can trans. Um, <laughs> I lost my word. You can transfer the um, MP3 from your computer to your player, um, so you can take the articles with you and listen to it. Um, as we're going out on the road show, there's you know tons of different ways people mention that um, how they could use this. Um, a number of people mentioned how great this would be for students that have maybe some learning um, disabilities and have a hard time reading the articles. They'd be able to listen to them. Uh, I have to admit, I have a stack of reading material on my desk that gets higher every day. Uh, sometimes I find it nice to just go into the database here and I can pull up the actual article I'm interested in and just listen to it. That way I can kind of multitask and do something at the same time as I'm, you know, listening to my article. Uh, I probably should admit this on, you know, a taped and recorded session, but <laughs> one day I was listening to another uh, article by Roger Welsh and it was all talking about the different towns in Nebraska and how you pronounce the different names. And so he was talking about how you pronounce, you know, Don and Dan and Brog and Beatrice, et cetera, et cetera. And I was so into listening to the article. I was so intently listening to see how they pronounce the names, you know, so I could get them correct. And then I realized, oh, it was a mechanical voice. And um, yeah, how they pronounced them really probably didn't matter. But <laughs> I was really into the story, so. I'm going to go back to the, tech, the text chat real quick here. I know there's a couple other questions here. Um, someone asked a few minutes earlier here about the, is the alert feature just a note sent to your email? And that answer is yes. So how I would set up that search and I showed you for the RSS feed, there is an email option. I just didn't point that out because it's been around for years. But um, yes, you can have the alerts sent to you as an email and, and it, uh, just like you would, I mean, it works the same way sort of as the RSS. It's the same type of option, so. There was a question before that about... Was there another? That, yeah. Um, yeah. Another question I didn't get to was, speaking of that, is there a list of magazines included? Um, Yes, there is. I will show you that in just a moment. I want to point a couple things out on this screen before I move away from it, then I will show you where the list of journals are. Um, if you have any other questions, please uh, keep typing them in. I will try to keep watching to, um, for them and make sure I get them all answered. Uh, on the screen, there are a couple other things, as I mentioned, I wanted to point out. One of them is the options to translate the document. And clicking on this will open another window, which I think you should be able to see now. And you'll see at the top here, you do have the, this little drop-down box. So I can pick, um, well, let's see what Japanese looks like. And I've had many people answer this, or ask me this, no, you cannot listen to the article in a foreign language. It's just the translates the text, and you have to be able to read it. Yeah, um, I, personally, I won't be able to read that one, so. And you just have to assume that it's correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then the other item I wanted to make sure people are aware of on this screen is the site option over here on the right-hand side. Uh, this is great if you're working on a paper and need to cite an article. You can see now it brings up and shows you how to properly cite the articles. You can see it tells you there's the MLA, the APA, um, and then there's two of the Chicago um, Tribune options available. I'm going to go ahead and, well, actually, um, the question was asked before about a list of journals, and you'll see up here in the blue bar where it says journal directory. 
Um, clicking on that will bring you a list of the journals that are available in the database. You can see here it's telling you that there's basically 2,504 journals. You can scroll down and see here's the list of them. It's quite a long list, so you do have the alphabet at the top and the bottom there to jump you to a particular letter. Let me just I'll gra randomly grab one here. Um, clicking on it will show you which issues are available. Doesn't look like this one is pub published too often. Um, clicking on any, on any of the issues will take you to the full text of that magazine then. And then you can um, find individuals in that issue. Any other questions that I haven't addressed yet? If not, I'm going to go ahead and jump in and show you the My Wilson Web area. So I'm going to go ahead and click on My Wilson Web. And um, I already have an account created. I'm sure that doesn't come as a surprise, but there is a new account option here if you need to set up an account. And you'll notice I have the option here to load my preferences from my Wilson Web when I log in. Checked. So you'll notice now as I log in, hopefully, <laughs> Um, you'll see now that I'm logged in that the interface has changed orange. Now that's just something I had set up in my customized interface. Uh, you have a couple different places you can do a customized interface. Um, I chose to do it as part of my Wilson Web, so every time I log on my customization appears. Um, if you don't have an account, you still do have the customized display option available at the top of your screen. Now granted, changing my screen to orange really not a big deal by any means. Um, you can see down here on the left I have the option of having a blue, a green, a red, or an orange screen. I just chose a different color so I could just visually see that I'm logged on to my account. Um, there's a few other options here. The one that I think is probably the most useful for me is the record display options. Um, this controls the number of records per page. By default, you only see 10 items per page. Um, personally, I like to see more, so I've upped it to 50. I find that really useful when I have to look through a number of re results until I find the you know, exact articles I'm looking for. I just like to be able to scroll through 50 at a time instead of just doing 10 next page, 10 next page, etc., etc. So that's the real option that I like here. Um, you do have other options over here on the right where you can select which fields are going to be included in your results. Um, again, you may want to play with those and see what you like or don't like, or want to turn off or turn on. For example, maybe you don't care if you see the ISN every time. But like I said, the one I really find useful is the number of dis items displayed per page. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of move on and show you what's available in my Wilson Web. You'll see uh, the first option is, is Save Searches. Um, the system allows you to save searches, so then anytime you log back into My Wilson Web, all you can do is uh, click on Run Search, and it will rerun the search for you. This can be nice if there's a particular topic you are you know, researching. You always want to come back and see if there's new articles. It's an easy way to do it. Um, if you want to save a search, in order to save a search, you're going to actually have to first run your search. Then after the search is run, you'll need to go to your search history. So 
So here is my search history, and I'll just take a look at my the first search I ran, that number uh, search number one, the Roger Wells search. Um, you'll see underneath of it here now I have a link that says Save Search to My Wilson Web. So just clicking on that, and I can add a name to it if I want, and hit Save. So now, when I go back to my Wilson Web, back to my saved searches, you can see here my search that I just named Roger has been saved. And anytime I want to run it again, I can just run the search. Um, below that, on the left-hand side, is saved alerts. When I showed you how to set up that RSS feed, I wasn't logged into my account. Um, if I had been logged into my account, it would take that saved alert that I created and add it to this list here. Um, you don't have to do that by any means. It is nice though because now I can just kind of look through the page and I can see all the different alerts that I have saved. Um, also, if I'm changing RSS readers, I can easily come in here and grab the URLs to the feed again and just go ahead and plop them into my new reader. So that's nice. Below that, then, you have a saved article option. So this allows you to save um, your articles. And what they've recently added is the option to create folders. Uh, so you can create different folders and kind of organize your, your saved items. Yeah. Um, this can be useful, of course, if you're working on you know, multiple papers, there's multiple topics you're researching. It's really easy to create a new folder. You can see I'm very creative with my folder names. And I can create my folder. So now all I have to do to move my items to the folder, um, I can just go ahead and select an article name. I can select multiple if I wanted to. And I select move to, whoops, and my folder. And now you can see that uh, this is my new folder now, it has one item in it. You can see I have already had two other folders here. Here's one on photography that says it has four items. I can just click on the folder name and now you can see the four um, articles that were included in that folder. And I should just mention real quickly here that my Wilson Web actually works with the Omni, Wilson OmniFile database that we're looking at now and it's also available in the Wilson Biographies database that I'm going to talk about in just a couple minutes if I hurry up here so we don't <laughs> run out of time. And I just mentioned that because you can see here in my saved items I also have two biography entries here. And so they all kind of get dumped into one spot so that could be another reason you would like folders. And the last item I wanted to point out in my Wilson Web is my notes. Now, I have to admit, mm -hmm. I haven't come up with a great use for my notes yet. Um, basically, all you do is over here you say create new note. Um, I can enter, um, now this is the note subject, and I can put my text here. Um, I don't know, one use I've thought of is maybe if you are searching on a topic and you're using a whole lot of different words that may mean the same thing or different, you're just trying very different approaches to find the same topic. Maybe you want to leave yourself a note saying that, okay, I've looked for, I've used, tried this search term, I've tried this search term, I've tried this search term already. Um, you know, maybe next time I have time to get on the database, maybe I'll want to try this term or this term. Uh, Something like that may work. As I think I, my other note here, Sid, that I did at one of the other road shows is I'm still having a hard time coming up with a good example. And if you come up with a great example, I'd love to know about it. But I did want to point it out there because I, it is kind of a nice feature, I think, um, as soon as I find a really great use for it. <laughs> that is just the basics I wanted to point out about the OmniFile. I just wanted to highlight some of the new enhancements and stuff.
Um, I want to switch. I know my time is running a little short here. I want to make sure, <clears throat> excuse me, that I have a chance to get in and show you the Biography Reference Bank Select database. Um, before I get out of this database and switch to that one, does anybody have any questions for me? It's hard to tell if the class is still awake when you can't see them. <laughs> Well, I haven't logged out yet, so that's, oh. <laughs> that's something. <laughs> You're awake. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, the question was asked, um, I've not used the export site feature. What are sites exported to? Um, the item that they're talking about here, let me go back. Do a real, you know, deep search here for dogs. <laughs> they gotta get start somewhere. See, there's an export option here. Or there's actually a citing and export here. Um, in order to go use those, you would need to have to use um, other pieces of software um, to like RefWorks, EndNotes, and a bibliographic software. Um, I have to admit, I have never played with any of those. But if those are pieces of software that you're familiar with, your students, your patrons use, um, then that would be a function you'd want to go ahead and get in and play with. Uh, the next question here was, um, do you have to get out of my Wilson Web to do another search? No, you do not have to get out of Wilson Web, to, my Wilson Web to do another search. As you saw, I just did that search on dogs, and I'm still logged in. Actually, if you want, you can log into my Wilson Web when you start searching and staying until you're done. Um, there is a sign out option here. So when you are done, you, if you want to sign out, you can. And you can see now my screen jumped back to blue because that's the default colors and I had mine set up to show orange. Well, I don't think any more questions came in, so I'm going to go ahead and jump back to Nebraska Access. And I'm going to go to the list of databases again. And I'm going to go ahead and select the Wilson Biographies database this time. Uh, I don't know how many of you have realized this. We have sent out an email about this change that took place, but uh, back in, I believe it was July 1st, it's been a couple months now, I think, we've actually switched which biography database we are using. Uh, we used to have Biographies Plus Illustrated, and we now switch to the Wilson Biography Reference Bank Select. Um, honestly, using the database, you probably would not even have noticed that we switched unless we told you. Uh, it looks and acts pretty much the same way. Um, basically, I think Wilson was trying to sort of phase out the other database, so they are the ones that asked us to make the switch to this database. Um, it covers 246,000 individuals. There's about 36,000 um, images. Um, according to their information, uh, the database grows by about 1,000 or so profiles a year. And of course, I have no way to actually check on that one, but that is what their documentation says. Uh, and just like the Biographies Plus um, database we've had in the past, uh, with the Biography Reference Bank Select, the articles and information in this database are taken from a lot of the other Wilson paper resources you're probably used to, like your current biography, your world author series, um, Nobel, Nobel Prize winners. Uh, and you'll see this when I get in and I show you one of the um, entries for a person. Uh, I just want to show you a few things on the search screen here to start with. 
you can see that, again, we have a search box here. And you can see now they have kind of recently added this line underneath this find box. This is for the most precise results, type last name, comma, first name. So just try to keep that in mind. Um, it's really hard for me. I still keep doing it just any way I feel like. But um, you do get better research results if you try to remember to type it in last name, first name. But the other thing I really like about this database is you don't need to know the name of a person to do a search. Um, if you don't know the name of a person, you have a number of options down here below that could be useful. First of all, there's date of birth and date of death. So if you want, you can enter and find all people that were born on a specific day or within a specific time range. And you can also bring up all the people that have died in a specific um, time range or on a specific date. You know, it's always fun to go out and see who was born on the same day as you. So if you haven't done that one, yeah, you might want to try it. Um, below that, then, there's professions, place of origin, and gender. Let me switch back here to my other pointer. Um, you can see here, it doesn't look like a drop-down box and the professions and activity, but as soon as you start typing, you will see a list that comes up here. So if I wanted scientists, I could select scientists. I could leave everything else blank and do a search and start my search and it would bring back all the scientists in the database. Um, same thing with place of origin. This is both countries and states. So maybe I wanted to do Nebraska. So I could just do place of origin Nebraska and find everybody um, from Nebraska who was born in Nebraska, or I could you know, combine it with scientists so I could all find all the scientists from Nebraska. Like I said, there's many ways to do searches um, without actually knowing the name of the pe person. And I can't forget down here um, the male-female option. So if you have students that are particular, you know, only want to do a report on a, a little boy or a little girl, you can have that option too. So I am going to clear my results. And I'm going to do a search for um, Walter Cronkite. Um, so you can see now it brought up my result for Roderick Walter Cronkite. And it, this is just bringing up the one record for Walter Cronkite, which is great. So I'm going to go ahead and click on his name. And then there's a few things I want to point out on the screen. Um, up here on the right-hand side, we still have the cite option available. So if your students need help citing your report, this um, entry, they have it right there. The listen to document option is available also in the biography, so you can listen to the, the biography. Um, you also have the translate option. Um, you can see this particular um, document that we're looking at right now is an obituary from current biography. It's a fairly decent length one. At the bottom, you'll see we have additional photos of him. Clicking on any of the photos will make them larger. And I want to put the information on the left-hand side of the screen here. Um, you can see it gives his um, birth and death dates. Um, right now, we're looking at the current biography. But you'll see under the biographies heading, um, we also have a current biography from 75. There's a current biography from 56. Any one of these I can click on and bring up the, the full text biography. You can see this biography is pretty lengthy. Uh, I personally find it interesting to go back and read some of these older biographies, see what people were doing in 56, and just think about how they've changed and you know, what else has happened during their lives between the, maybe the 56 biography and the 75 biography, and then what else has changed to, you know, what we thought about them, you know, in their finally in their obituary, so. Um, below that, then you'll also see there's an entry here from the Hutchinson Encyclopedia Biography of 2000, and then the Chambers um, Bibliographical Dictionary from 1997. Again, those are all full text, so you can click on any one of them to see the full text. 
And the final area down here is other materials. Um, this is going to contain articles um, about the person, articles by the person, books about the person, and books by the person. Now, which one of those are four available will depend on the person. Of course, if they didn't write any books, then there would be no books there. Um, same thing, if nobody has written books about them, there are no books will show up there. I'm just going to go ahead and click on the most recent articles. And you can see here now, it looks like nobody's really written about Walter Cronkite too recently. Um, the latest one here is from actually 2007 from a broadcasting and cable. This looks like the name of the magazine. And again, we have the full text of all these articles. So we have the option of clicking on them and reading the full articles. And again, that's, you can see the sound icon is carried through. So again, you're able to listen to the articles. I think that's the main points I wanted to show about this database. I know that was a really quick overview, but I want to make sure you got out of here on time. Before we wrap it up for the day, do you guys have any um, questions for me about the biography database or the Wilson Omnifile database? Well, it doesn't look like it, so I just want to say thanks for coming, and I will let Krista wrap it up then. Okay. Uh, it, it, uh, this has been very enlightening. Good job. <laughs> um, Um, yes, if you don't have any more questions right now for Alana, that's fine. You can contact her afterwards. We've got her email, um, our email and 800 number up here. So please feel free um, with any, any, if you do come up with any questions or things you want to ask about the Wilson, um, both the Wilson, Wilson databases. Um, so that will wrap it up for today's um, Encompass Live. We hope you'll join us again next week when our topic, our topic will be Twitter tips and tricks. Uh, two weeks ago we did a basic intro to, to using Twitter um, and we decided there was a, there's a lot to it and a lot of questions that people had. So we're going to do a kind of an advance, like the next step. You've already got your account. You've been using it for a little while. You've been following people. They're following you. But what else can you do with it? So um, that is going to be our topic for next week. Thank you very much for attending, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.